Hi there folks, it's Danny. I have a question for you. Do you like strategy games? Because I really love them. And every time a new strategy game comes out, I'm like really happy. This year we've seen a bunch of awesome projects from classic turn-based strategies and fantasy worlds to realistic government management simulations and historical setting games. That means the genre is still alive and well, and uh, I think it is the perfect time to take stock of the year 2023 and look at the best new games in the world of strategy. But before we begin, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you and you to the channel. Okay, let's get started. Let's start with The Age of Wonders 4. It is the sequel of famous fantasy strategy series. This game combines the elements of 4X strategy and turn-based tactical combat and lets you control your own faction. The story is about some uh, wizard king returning to the world and trying to take over the power of mortals. And now you need to lead one of the factions and prepare for the upcoming battle. As for gameplay, well, he will have the the strategic map and a lot of tactical battles. On the strategy map you will have to explore new lands, build cities, and develop technology and magic, complete quests, conduct diplomacy, and trade with other factions. In general, everything is pretty standard for strategy. As for the battles, he will control your units and lead them to victory step by step. Each unit has its own unique characteristics, abilities, and equipment that you can improve roof as you play. I think this game is like really good. Next we have North Guard. This is a fascinating colorful strategy game based on Scandinavian mythology. Here you control a clan of Vikings fighting for dominance over a mysterious new continent. The game was released back in 2018, but since then it has got like a lot of updates, extras and enhancements that have made it even more interesting. So this game is perfect for today's video. You start here with like a small settlement and only a few inhabitants whom you'll have to send out to mine resources first and then build the very first big buildings. The game map is made up of separate regions where you'll find resources, treasure, but also all sorts of evil creatures. Each region has a limited number of places to build houses. The game gets frequent updates, adding like new clans, modes and campaigns, as well as balance adjustments and some fixes. And I think that's really cool. It kind of refreshes the game and keeps player for losing interest in it. And for fans of the Warhammer universe, I brought Total War Warhammer 3. The game's plot unfolds around the great planetary conquest. The four gods of chaos, Korn, Slanish, Nargal, and Zink decide to divide the world of humans and other races between them. However, well, not everyone is happy about it. The defenders of the old world, along with some new factions, decide to confront them. Each of these factions has its own unique campaign that will let you know their history, motives, and goals. In this game, you can choose one of the several races, each with its own characteristics units, heroes and playstyle too. You will deal with turn-based strategy on the global map and real-time tactical map battles. On the global map, you kind of manage your armies, and cities, diplomacy, economy and magic. And on the tactical map, you participate in battles where you can use different units, heroes, spells and the siege weapons. In general, I would say that strategies don't differ much in gameplay, but anyway, it is a real iconic game that is definitely worth your time. Well, let's take a look at Mechabellum. 
It's an epic auto battler game that will send you to a newly explored planet. Well, the game's story is pretty simple. You are one of the colonists, you arrive on a distant planet in search of new resources and opportunities. However, you discover that the planet is not as safe as it seemed to be at first glance. Dangerous creatures live here, and they do not want uninvited guests at all. Furthermore, you are not alone on this planet, there are other colonies that are sure to fight you for territory and resources, so you'll have to defend your base from your enemies and attack their bases yourself using your army of mechs. And since it's an auto battler, you don't control your units in real time, you just set them up on the battlefield before the battle starts, and then you watch the battle go on. And you can also change the outcome with the commander's special abilities if your troops, well, aren't doing very well. The game has different types of units that have their own strengths and weaknesses, and you can also combine different units to create the best possible strategy for each battle. Another space strategy game is Silica. In this game you have an important mission to accomplish, which is to take control of the planet Balteros. The game will tell you about the fight against an alien race in a desert setting. This race was inspired by Dune and Starcraft, so if you are a fan of these projects, go for it. But anyway, what makes Silica special is that you can switch between strategy view and first or third person views. You can choose one of three factions. There are two human factions, which like don't differ much from each other, and aliens. Depending on the faction you choose, you will have special kinds of units, vehicles and buildings too. For example, one of the human factions specializes in high-tech weapons and defense, while the other uses hybrid technology and mobility. The aliens? Well, really on numbers and aggressiveness. You can take on both the role of commander, managing your base and giving orders to your subordinates, and the role of soldiers and engage in combat directly with the first person view. You can switch between the roles at any time, and I think that's really cool. Let's not stray too far from the space theme, because I have stranded Alien Down for you. This planetary survival simulator offers you to take charge of a small group of survivors who have crashed on a known planet. Your task is to protect them from all sorts of bad things, like starvation, disease, extreme weather conditions and alien attacks. So you have to build bases, gather resources, research technology, grow food and hunt. Each survivor team has their own unique history, skills, personality traits and needs, and you have to take all this into account and make sure that they not only survive, but also like live a happy life. What's special about the game is that each playthrough can be like unique. You are free to choose the difficulty of the game, the planet size, the number of survivors, and even one of several scenarios for your world. This means you can start with something other than a spaceship crash, and uh, that's great. Well, let's go back to Earth and look at Total Conflict Resistance. It's a kind of mix of global strategy, tactical and first-person action game. The story brings you to the world of not-so-distant future, where a totalitarian regime has taken over the country that led to its disintegration into several micro-states. You are the leader of the resistance, and your task is to unite disparate clans and factions, create your own army with the fighters and military equipment, size territories and resources, conduct negotiations and diplomacy, develop your infrastructure and science, and participate in exciting battles. There are three main modes – global campaign, tactical campaign, and combat mode. In the global, you kind of run your state on the world map. In the tactical, you control your battalion on a sector map, you can capture points of interest, complete missions, and so on. And and in a combat mode you can battle directly, controlling your fighter or equipment. I think it sounds pretty versatile, doesn't it? Yeah. 
Well, let's talk a little bit more about space and take a look at Oxygen. It's a city building simulator with the survival elements, and here you have to build your own city around the Oxygen Center and try to create a new civilization in this, well, post apocalyptic future. The fact is that there was a global catastrophe on Earth that wiped out most of the life on the planet. Only like small oasis of life remained, with people trying to survive in the face of constant threats. One such oasis is the Oxygen Center. It's a unique facility that can produce oxygen from the atmosphere and sustain life around it. So yes, this is where you'll be doing a lot of buildings and uh, just kind of surviving. Building is basically a contribution to the future. New buildings, new roads, power grids and everything else expands the Oxygen Center's footprint making life in it even better. As for survival, well, that means you'll be busy collecting and produced resources like food, some materials and water, and uh, you'll also have to keep the residents' happiness levels up. And trust me, that's not something you should neglect. Next, we have TerraScape, a city building simulator with card game elements. In this game, you have to build your own dream city using different decks of cards that allow you to use different buildings and ways to expand your city. Each card has its own placement conditions, its own pros and cons, and its own like connections to other cards. You have to place your cards wisely, and then you can earn points and get rewarded with new cards. Well, there are two mods, puzzles and sandbox. Puzzles offer you to score the required number of points on a given terrain, but you'll have a limited set of buildings and cards at your disposal. The difficulty of the puzzles also increases as you play. Well, in sandbox mod, you'll have several types of locations that you can build up to your heart's content. They can be either small or really huge, and you can also complete a game against other players in multiplayer mode. Victoria 3 is a global strategy game created by Paradox Interactive. This game continues the tradition of the previous games and allows you to control one of several dozens of nations in the period from 1836 to 1936. This time was not chosen by chance because it is full of all sorts of events and changes like the Industrial Revolution, Socialism, Imperialism, World War wars and other stuff. You'll have to like keep the interests in your society in balance, make reforms and innovations, develop the economy and technology, and wage war. Victoria 3 differs from other strategies in its profundity and complexity. Here you will see a detailed population system divided into different groups by class, profession, culture, religion and politics. Each group has different needs and desires that affects their level of well-being and loyalty to the government, and you will have to take all of these factors into account when making decisions, trying to avoid social conflicts and revolutions. All in all, this game will give you a taste of the rule of a real ruler. Let's go back to the present day and look at strategy. But in the framework of post-nuclear war survival, the last haven. Here you are in charge of a small settlement of survivors. You need to provide them with their food, a home protection and other resources. And here not only manage the settlement, but also study technology, produce weapons and ammunition, organize defense and raids for supplies to other areas. And uh, like other strategies, here your enemy is not only cold and hunger, but also radiation, bandits and mutants. But like any other strategy, this one has strategic and tactical mods. In strategy mode, you control your settlement from a bird's eye view. You can like build houses, siege workers, distribute resources and so on. In tactical mode, you like switch to individual inhabitants or squads 
squads and can control them directly, move them around the map, fight their enemies or collect loot. Well, now let's go under the water and look at Aquatico. Just imagine, in the near future, the surface of the Earth has become a barren wasteland, but people haven't given up hope of finding a new home. So they went underwater, hoping to find a safe place and start life anew. Actually, they succeeded, but life at the bottom of the ocean is not easy. You have to search and mine resources produce everything you need to live in the ocean depths and overcome literally tons of dangerous lurking in this incredible place. Creating a city in an underwater environment, as you can see, comes with certain difficulties. And in order to solve them, you will have to build not only houses and factories, but also special types of infrastructure that will provide all residents with the necessary things that are missing underwater. Like oxygen, normal pressure level and so on. Also, building in this game requires careful planning, because you are limited by the space at the bottom of the ocean. But it's obviously more beautiful here, isn't it? By the way, what about you? Do you prefer unusual strategies in space or the ocean like this one, or standard strategies? Write in the comments below. And speaking of space, well, I've got Ixion for you. It's a real-time indie strategy game with management elements. Here you are the administrator of the Tukin Space Station, which is the prototype project of the Dolas Corporation. Humanity's only hope of escaping the ecological collapse on Earth. However, during the launch of the station, disaster strikes, part of the moon is detached from its orbit and destroys the planet, and the prototype of the Tukin space station is abandoned in space. Now you are left alone in a cold and dangerous universe. You will have to fight for the survival of your crew and find a new home for the rest of mankind. Here you'll deal with provisions, power supply, solving all sorts of problems, well, come up almost every day. As you progress, you'll discover new star systems, planets and asteroids where you can mine resources, find artifacts of ancient civilization or, well, face some dangerous. You'll also uncover the secrets of the Dollars Corporation, its goals and motives, and learn about other factions that are also trying to survive in space. It all sounds very promising. Age of Empires 4 Anniversary Edition is an updated and expanded version of the famous historical strategy game that continues the tradition of the series, putting you in the center of the epic battles that define the course of world history. In this game, you can choose from a dozen civilizations, from the British to the Chinese, and begin your path to glory. Each civilization has its own unique units, technology, benefits and style of play. You can take part in different campaigns, such as the Hundred Years' War between England and France, or try to restore the glory of the Mongol Empire. Each campaign here consists of several missions. You'll have to, like, gather resources, build your base, research technology, scout territories and, of course, kill your enemies. There aren't many resources here, like only four food, wood, gold and stone. But trust me, that will be enough for you to build houses, recruit units, develop your civilization and just enjoy the game. Well, there has been a lot of strategy stuff today, but you know, there is never enough of it. So I'm gonna show you Dune Spice Wars. This is a 4x real-time strategy game. Here you must lead your faction and fight for control and dominance over the harsh desert planet of Arrakis. And it's not just like a strategy game about sand and worms. There are many factors you must consider. Politics, war, ecology, religion and of course spies. 
the most valuable resource in the universe. Spice not only gives you money, it also gives you power. It gives you the ability to develop technology, improve your units, and even makes interstellar travel possible. But anyway, there are several playable factions, the Atreides, the Harkonnens, the Freeman, and others. Each faction has its own characteristics, for example, the Freeman are skilled guerrillas and great desert experts. Oh, and one more thing. There is also a multiplayer mode, so if you get bored playing alone, you can always invite your friends and play together. Well, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and found something interesting. And if so, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It's been Danny, see you guys soon.